Hi Fox, uh, good morning. Um, I just want you to bring you an update on this. Uh, I have two videos that has been removed by YouTube. Um, they haven't given me any uh, satisfactory answer as to why they would have done so. Uh, this got to do with the object that I took uh, both on March the 1st and 31st, which I included in some analytical work. This particular one that I did runs for 42 minutes and 48 seconds, all right? And uh, as you can see there, this uh, this one has been rejected. So if you if you click on the, on this one, I will provide the link to it so you can have a look just for your own information. And this is what it says. Okay, this video has been removed because its contents violates YouTube terms of services. No need to tell you who this uh, complaint would have come from. And the other one is this particular one. Um, we shall provide a lot of analytical work on this one and that one has always also been rejected okay so this one runs for 21 minutes and 19 seconds and I did this one on April the 22 of this year okay so I'm just going to click on this one and this is what you get as well and uh, this video has been removed because its contents violate YouTube's terms of violation. So what I'm going to be doing is we're going to go back on this one. So I'm going to edit some of the work here. All right. Good morning, everyone. This is Sangster One. Uh, before I start, um, I've been asked a lot of questions as to what sort of camera I'm using. So just want to get this out of the way. It's an SD60 Panasonic camera, uh, which has a zoom of 25. 35, 60, and 1500 zoom. Uh, so I thought I'd get out of the way. Another thing that um, very seldom is mentioned is about this one. This is a, um, a stylus pen, and is, in my opinion, it's just for calibrating, which is very important. Something that most people disregard when doing the unboxing. Uh, I've also been uh, asked about uh, how do I do the videos and convert them into photos. So I just want to everybody assure that I'm going to be explaining that, but this is a software that is very important. It comes with a Panasonic. And if you have a camera of this type, I suggest that you load this one and I get back to you as soon as I can uh, on this uh, issue. Um, I also want to thank, now that we're coming back to this one, I want to thank um, uh, the, the Hill Leader newspaper, in particular uh, Elizabeth Allen for uh, doing uh, this interview with me and uh, as you can see, I, they put it on page 9. It's a very informative newspaper unlike the mainstream media which is full of garbage. Um, very informative so uh, I just Turn around this one. Um, I'm only using the one hand on the camera, so I hope that <laughs> uh, you forgive me if I'm uh, not very uh, organized here. It's very early in the morning and I don't want to make too much noise. So, okay, so here's a picture of me taken, and, and this one was done on the uh, 30 of uh, what is this going on? Uh, and the 95 aircraft movement at airport in the year to June 30 of this. Uh, okay, so it's talking there about the, all the planes that come. And uh, that's me, and they're talking. Now the uh, heading has sort of changed, and now they're talking about contrails in the sky, sunset mystery. And so we have here um, uh, the uh, Australian services um, uh, together with the other one uh, what do you call this one um, uh, Mr. Perez Vlahos of the Astronomical Society of Victoria and they both seem to have uh, put this story uh, together communicate with each other suggesting that this is a contrail and nothing else uh, without um, putting in information needed as to uh, the flight plan which by law they should they should have input, uh, they, they should have stated that 
and they haven't done it and I think that's a real pity because uh, on the flight plan it would have included uh, the particular plane, the direction and the height of the plane but they haven't done that, they, they refuse to include it even though uh, I already read a, a number of emails to Mr. Matt Walder, Walder whatever his name is, Walder I think it's pronounced and he's just disregarding that completely and as far as Mr. Blahos is concerned he refuses to have anything to do with this now, uh, the reason why I'm bringing up this uh, subject again is because I do think it deserves an answer but also because um, I have a photographer by the name of um, Mr. Rodolfo uh, Alaluf and uh, he did send me some pictures that he took on the 2nd of April at 6.45 a.m. Uh, to 7.39 a.m., okay? And this was taken in Cordoba, um, in, in Argentina. Now, uh, I just um, um, cut here his address because I think that's his personal thing. I don't want anybody, uh, you know. Yeah, just for his own safety. Okay, so uh, he, he he wrote me here. Um, Hi, Sangster One, which is my channel. Hello, Sergio. Uh, you saw my pictures for all investigation purposes. I'm putting inside this uh, reference my name, date, hour, and location, which I already done. And so, all right. Uh, Sign a look for. Uh, Rodolfo Alufo from Argentina. I think this is very important, all right? And I also got here, you can read for yourself. He did a video on this as well, which I, I will put a link on, on this YouTube um, so you can have a look at it, which is very interesting because I think, in my own opinion, these two objects are one at the same, this other sign. And uh, this might be a little bit confusing for some of you who do not understand the Spanish, but uh, in essence, um, he did a, a, a total of around 13 pictures and he informed the Astronomical Observatory in Cordoba and the information that he got uh, the astronomer, uh, the Observatory Astronomical de Cordoba, the information they got from Australia was that it was some sort of uh, garbage uh, NASA that came into space and uh, burned up in the atmosphere. Uh, that is from Australia. So, so that's it. Now uh, I wanted to include here his photo um, uh, it's just it's a little bit hard here to take it but uh, if if you have a look at this subject this object here you see you see that this one is the one that he took on, on April and uh, I'd like you to compare this one with mine uh, this one was taken on the 31st. Now, there is a difference here in that uh, it appeared a few minutes earlier. Uh, this is the second day, all right? And I believe this one was um, 19 past seven. And, and this one here was the first one that we took, which was taken at uh, 7.23. And there will, you can see the plane there. It is nighttime already, uh, after dusk. And uh, you see the tiles, all right. Uh, you see how it is. is is a little bit lower, all right. It's due west, southwest, uh, westly. And uh, here, you can see uh, it moved a few degrees further up. All right, so there you have it. Uh, and to me, uh, I also want to bring up one point that uh, people seem to um, 
not to take very notice of this, is that when I first saw this object in the sky, to me it appeared like a little, um, like a pointy star, like a morning star or something like that. It is only that when you magnify this this object, because this one, this photo, I magnifying it hundreds of times to make it this big, uh, then you begin to see that it's taking shape and it's something else. But unless, if you don't have a powerful zoom lens or a telescope, uh, you will not notice this at all. You will, you will not even know it is there. Okay, uh, this is an, uh, another picture that I've taken of this object. Uh, as you can see, it's magnified many times. Uh, enlarged, should I say, it's been enlarged many times. And uh, you can see the two tails there of this particular object, all right? Now, what I did here, uh, that I use this color, which I intend to explain how I do this thing. Uh, I did this uh, using automatic exposure. So you can see the object um, is stuck up more from the background as compared to this one, which you can barely see, hardly see, it's just the same sort of color. But here it shows even more. Okay, so you can see. And, uh, and I intend to show, because this is part of the video, but I captured this on, on a photo, which I explained later on uh, as we go on my, on my next uh, video thing. Now this, the object again, enlarged um, many times over, and as you can see, the center is very, very bright, very burning, and here is where he was changing shape, and he was doing it, separating. And you can see that. Uh, I apologize for the color, it's just that uh, I, it's running out of ink. <laughs> and here is another enlargement, uh, done many 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 times i mean have a look at this it's like looking at star wars uh you can see here there were, this is the main area here now and uh it's just unbelievable just how bright that thing was it's different when you see it in the when you are there taking the photo it's just unbelievable. Uh, another one uh, it's a different one and you can see this, 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 have a look at this. This is incredible. He's separating, and we start separating about here. And of all the things, this is this object is very important, as I will show you afterwards. And here we have now the separation. Now I did make a mistake when I was taking this video, because uh, in my own opinion, I should have. Uh, move back a little bit and watch the whole lot separating because it was it was a sight to behold but when, you know you when you're there you, you just can't think I mean you know what I'm saying and so now we come to this particular object with the astronomical society does not wish to answer uh, as you can see this object here uh, you don't see very much details all right um, you can just barely make the five circles there. Um, by definition, according to ufology here in Victoria, it is a UFO because it cannot be identified. However, it is not a flying saucer, so according to them, it doesn't count as a UFO. Well, I ask you, uh, you agree with that? Who knows? And here we come now to this object. Uh, you have to excuse me because the light in the chandelier here is seem to be disturbing the photo, but so I just move it to the side of it. And here, uh, this is what I've done. Uh, I put this one on automatic exposure. I want the background to stick out, so I make the this object uh, more brighter so that you can see the five. Um, the five shiny um, flashing circles. Now you can see he has a shape. 
uh, have a look at here on, on, on this side here. Can you see that? I mean, this is definitely not a contrail. Uh, contrails just don't do this because it, this is what it was descending. Now you see that? It, it, it's just it's just unbelievable. It's amazing. And here I got another one. Uh, as you can see here, it shows even more. I suppose that for those of you in, in researchers who have um, computer enhancement, you could um, perhaps work out what this is. Um, if anybody has that sort of equipment, I, I would like to know more about it. Okay? So, there we are. So, what do you think it is? Is it a comet? A UFO? Is it an Air Force plane? You tell me. If this was an Air Force plane, do they look like this? I mean, is, is, is this is uh, incredible pictures and it's something worth investigating it's definitely not a contrail and for those uh, uh, people that and I hope to hear from you soon and who knows maybe one day I capture a flying saucer <laughs> uh, okay have a good day and get back to you thank you